don't fuss later on. I'll, uh, you, had, you had your chance. So, But if you'd like to this morning, turn with us to the book of Ephesians. Turn with us to the book of Ephesians. We're going to be starting uh, at the second chapter, the second chapter of the book of Ephesians. We're going to be reading the 20th through the 22nd verse, and then we're going to uh, go over a page or two to the fourth chapter of the book of Ephesians. Uh, the second chapter of the book of Ephesians, uh, uh, verses 20 through 22, and the uh, fourth chapter of Ephesians, 15 through 17. If I had thought this morning, it would be building something special. Building something special. Uh, I have thought so much about, uh, you know, uh, the church and... and uh, all the things we've done, and, and I started to read out of Nehemiah today, but I think most of you all know I've probably preached enough on Nehemiah. Most of you all can probably recite Nehemiah by heart now. So as I was looking at uh, what the Lord might have for us to preach out of this morning, I, I ran across several scriptures, and, and I thought about, uh, you know, the church and how that uh, we have to sustain growth. Now, I've been here for now on the 15 years now, and... I have thought a lot about the church and how it grows and, and building something special. Uh, Nehemiah always seemed to have fit. Uh, you know, I, I thought a lot about that. And we may hit him a little bit directly, but, but, you know, we have experienced periods of phenomenal growth. There has been times when we have seen the church grow. I mean, just, it just seemed like it was just super fast. And then we've seen super fast leaving. And then we see... Uh, sustained growth and we see people stay and, and, and I've often thought about that I've often thought about the things that we do to build the church now when I say the church please don't misunderstand the church is not the wood and mortar and bricks that you see around you that's not the church that is a building that God has allowed us to have and to worship in to keep us dry and to keep our, our comfort so to speak while we are here now you may be sitting here saying, I'm either freezing to death or I'm hot. Give it a moment. It'll change. But the fact is, that's not the church. This, this is not the church. The church is a body of believers that are built and, and put together and not by accident. I'm a firm believer that God brings people together for a purpose and a cause, and that purpose and cause is for the upbuilding of his kingdom. And we as his church need to realize that we all are a part of that church. In the second chapter of the book of Ephesians, uh, starting in the 20th verse, it says, And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye are also builded together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. Now, if you will, turn with me over to the fourth chapter. The fourth chapter, the 15th through the 17th verse. The fourth chapter, the 15th through 17th verse, it says, But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part making increase in the body unto the edification or unto the edifying of itself in love this i say therefore and testify in the lord that ye henceforth walk not as other gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind he talks here about the uh one of the things that i as i was studying about this and, and i couldn't quite get away from the thought was how that he said fitly join together in both places Paul was talking about, he said, he said that the body that we are put together fitly together, fitly joined. Now, I'm not a carpenter, okay? I'd be the first to admit that I'm not a carpenter. My theory in carpenter has always been if it's functional, then it's okay, which often leads to the next step, that it's not pretty. And sometimes it's not even that functional. I use twice as many nails as most people would use because I have to. I use things in places they don't necessarily go because I have to. At the end of the day, it holds together, but it may not be the most aesthetically pleasing. See, so when people who know what they're doing are doing something and craftsmen know what they're doing, they can, they can put something together, they can use less material and do more with it and make it look better than I ever could. 
when I was thinking about that jointly and compactly fit together church, that how God uses us, each and every one, to be fitly compacted and joined together, I couldn't help but think of the scripture found in the book of Romans, the 12th chapter. It says, for we... For as we have many members in one body, and, are all, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. To be one another. And I've often thought about that, how that as we try to build a church, as we try to build something sustainable, I, I love the fact that as I look back through the years that I've been here already, I think back about all those that were here uh, 15 years ago when I got to come here uh, first time and preach almost 15 years ago, how that, that the landscape of the church has basically totally changed for the most part. As I look back and I look through the pews, I can think about all those that used to fill these pews that have gone home to their eternal reward to be with the Lord. And I thank God for those people because here's why. Because those people work together to build a foundation of a church that you and I can enjoy today. They, they were concerned about working together so that, that what was built would last so another generation could have that to worship in and enjoy. Not so much the building, but the body. We as God's people need to realize that we need to be fitly joined together. As I was thinking about how that we need to be built, and I was thinking about building something special, we have the opportunity today not to be like every other church. We have the opportunity today, even after um, nearly four, 15 years of ministry, how that it seems like a new day, how that we have the opportunity today to build something unlike anything around us. You see, it don't take much imagination to figure out what goes on in church these days. Matter of fact, I, I went for a walk in the, in the graveyard this morning, and as I was walking up on the hill, I could look out and I could see steeples. And I could see steeples. And I could see steeples. You can find churches everywhere. Most of them not much different than the one that you're sitting in today. They pretty much do the same things. We say the same things. We we seen the same things. Probably, if I'm going to go out on a limb, most probably have it in the same order, too. Sing a few songs, shake a hand, preach a message, hymn of invitation. Somewhere in there, of course, we are Baptists. We take up an offering. And then we dismiss. And then the drag race begins to the restaurant. And the thing about it is, Anybody that goes to any of these churches can go to each one and they can plug and unplug in these churches without many, much consequence or difference. I can go to this church and I can pretty well tell you what they're going to say. I can go to this church and tell you what they're going to say. I can go to this church and tell you when they're going to pray. But now we at Clear Branch have an opportunity. And that opportunity is to do something a little different, to do something a little special. You see, every other church out there will have their issues. Every church will have their troubles. Every church will have their trials. And we are not unlike most every other church. But now, God has provided the message this morning. And as I was praying about that this week, and I was looking this week at what God would have for us to talk about, it dawned on me and was revealed to me that we have an opportunity to do something unlike every other church within rock-throwing distance of this church. We have an opportunity to come together in a spirit of unity and in love, working toward the common goal. Amen. You say, well, Brother Randy, that's the goal of every church. Not really. There are churches out there that are, their whole purpose is to see how many people they can get through the doors. It doesn't matter about sharing the gospel. It doesn't matter about the Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter what you're teaching. As long as we can fill the pews and as long as the numbers look good, then that's what it's all about. There are churches out there today that's all about the money. I don't care if, if you have two, but our offering's bigger than everybody else's in town. There are churches out there that, that congregate for the reason of a social club, more or less. Just to be able to socialize and to know the goings-on of the community. Well, if that's the case, then I would invite you to start a civic center rather than a church. But we at Clear Branch have an opportunity in a, in a time of awakening that we can look around and say, you know what, it is time that we build something special. 
But as I was walking around this morning, I was looking at the trees and I was realizing that they are just, just a, a week or two away from budding out and to having the renewed time of springtime. If the Lord tears is coming, when all the leaves bud out and all the, uh, and I know half the people are saying the pollen too. But as, as we, we see that renewed time of springtime coming upon us, we also have the opportunity this morning to realize that we have a time and a period that we can build something special. It fits hand in hand with the seasons of which we're going into. But we must realize today that each and every person has a place and a job to do in the building of the church. Now, like I say, I'm no builder. But a couple of things I have learned through the years. It's very crucial where you have your supports. Now, cosmetically speaking, you can do a lot of things with very little support. You can build a building that may look good for a while, but if it's not structurally sound, I believe it's kind of like, as Jesus described, a house that is built upon sand. That when the storms come and trouble times happen, that it, the great will be the fall of it. Paul says that we are to be built on the chief cornerstone. He calls Jesus Christ out as the chief cornerstone. So first and foremost, we must realize today that we must be centered in Christ. Amen. I'm going to challenge each and every one of you this morning as I have had to challenge myself that if we are going to build something special, I want you to examine your relationship with Jesus Christ. Okay, I know that sounds trite in church, right? We all know that we have a relationship with Christ. Do we really? Do you really have a relationship with Christ? Do you, have, or, or is it kind of like saying that I passed by the fire and I smell like smoke without ever feeling any of the heat? Or is your relationship in Christ sound? Are you secure in your relationship with him? Are you good with your relationship with him? If not, and, and, and I know this is a foreign concept, but if there's things that, that hinder your ability to serve in church, may I suggest to you that if you want to be a, sound, a sound structural member of the church, can I encourage you to get rid of those things through repentance this morning? Don't be ashamed of it. We all do it. We've all been there. There's times that I have let Randy control himself. And when that happens... I'm not centered and founded in Christ. There are times, I'm sure, when you have allowed yourself to become self-centered and, and self-appreciating and, and never realizing that the whole time that has drawn you away from your foundation, which is Jesus Christ, can I challenge you this morning to look with inside of yourself and say, you know what, I need to get back to the foundation that never moves, and that is Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus, I need you in my life. I need to be centered to you. I need to be anchored to you. We love the song that Kay sings from time to time, the anchor holes. You don't have the anchor holes because you're connected to it. The anchor don't hold if you're not connected. Get connected. Get rooted. Get grounded. Put you some roots down in that foundation, that chief cornerstone, which is Jesus Christ. Ask him today, are you satisfied with where I am in my life? And if not, then the next logical thing will be to say, well, Lord, help me clear away the rubbish. I told you I could throw some Nehemiah in there before it's over with. In the book of Nehemiah, I love that book. It, it, it so mirrors the building of a church when they were building the wall. There were some things that I was looking at this week, and I was, I was looking at, and, and there are some, some things that I, I see that mirrors where we're at in church, and one of the things that I, under, I noticed was this, was there was a point in time when all the workers were there, and they went to Nehemiah, and they said, Nehemiah, we can't build the wall because there's too much trash in the way. Nehemiah, we can't work because there's all this rubbish. There's just such clutter. Can I tell you today that if you're trying to build a spiritual life and you're going to want to be a part of a, of a very special thing here that we're trying to build at Clear Ranch, that if you've got rubbish and trash in your life that you're not going to be able to work on it? If you're listening to the noise and the clutter that the world has in your life, that you're not going to be able to get to where you need to be? 
Now, I'm just a lowly electrician working construction for 30-something years. One of the things I found out is that, that when you're working on a construction site, there's a lot of times that the very first thing you have to do in order to get to your work is clean somebody else's mess out of the way. Can't tell you how many times that I've went in and there'll be pieces of scrap or duct work or pipe or something else that's been in the way and I couldn't even get to what I was trying to work on so I had to start by cleaning up. Now listen to me and I want you to listen good. And please understand because I'm going to try to speak truthfully I'm going to try to speak plainly as I say this. I do not want to clean up your rubbish. Okay? Okay? I don't want to clean up your life. That's not my job. That's your job. I have enough to do to keep my house clean. I can't keep my house and your house clean. Now, we're going to build something special, but in order to build something special, we're going to have to clean up some houses. In order to build something special, we're going to have to look at our life and say, you know what, there's some rubbish that we got piled up that we're going to have to get rid of. If I were to call somebody at my house and say, hey, I want you to build me a house, and they look at it and say, hey, ain't nothing but a big old pile of rocks and, and, and trash and stuff. I can't build on that. Why not? Because it won't stand. You got to get all that cleared out. You got to get a place to work. You got to get down to some solid places there where I can lay a foundation. I think a lot of us today are wanting to try to put the chief cornerstone on a pile of rubble. Jesus, I want you in my life, but I want you in my life on top of all this other junk. Jesus, I want you in my life, but I want you on top of all my ill feelings and my anger and all the bad things and all the harsh feelings and all the other things that I do. Jesus, I want you to bless me, but I want you to bless over top of all this. And Jesus says, hey, tell you what, let's get this stuff cleaned out and then we'll start from there. Fitly join together, see. We have to realize now, and this is another piece of information I found in the book of Nehemiah. When you read the, I think it is the third chapter of the book of Nehemiah, it starts talking about all the people. And many times I've read through Nehemiah, I kind of just skipped over top of that. I love the story about him praying. I love the story about him fasting. I love the story about his concern. I love the story about him going out and inspecting. And then I love the story of the building, and I love the story of the completion. But here's the one part that I, start, I, I caught myself trying to run through real fast because I didn't think it was that important. It was the third chapter. In the third chapter of the book of Nehemiah, he's talking about and, and Hannah and Aniah and Azekariah and all these people. And I was like, well, it don't matter. Yeah, it does. You know why? Because every single one of them had a job to do. Every single one of them counted. Every single one of them mattered. And it didn't matter where they were from. It didn't matter what you called them. It didn't matter what their job was before. All that Nehemiah knew was is they're trying to build a wall and they needed every single one of them to work. And can I tell you today, if you're under the hearing of my voice, you are needed. Now, notice what I said. You're not wanted. I didn't say you was even expected. I said you needed. There's a difference between being wanted and needed. There's a difference between being expected and needed. You see, we don't want people. We don't expect people. We need people. But we need people whose foundation is Jesus Christ who wants to be fitly joined together and compacted with those fellow believers that wants to build something special today. Amen. We need you. Now, for those of you out there that says, well, I just wished I was needed. Can I? Well, guess what? Hello, is this thing on? You need it. So don't go tomorrow and say, man, I wish I could find a church that needs me. I can't tell you how many times I hear that. I have people that I visit with on a regular basis that come talk to me and they say, well, I just wish I was needed. You're needed. Can I spell it any other way? Can I, can I say it any other way to make you understand today that you are needed? When you are not here, there is a hole the size of you in this building. We need you. We need you. 
Now, you say, well, that's not important. Okay, I'll tell you what to do then. I would say most of us here live in some kind of dwelling. Today, if you would like, I will come to your house. And I will pick one supporting member of your house, and I will jerk it out. If that's okay with you. You say, well, Brother Randy, I need that. Well, guess what? We need you too. Now, if you're happy with me coming and jerking out maybe a corner pillar of your, of your house, or maybe you like for me to go up under the crawl space and jerk a couple of timbers out from under there, if you're good with that and you want to live in that house, then fine, just tell me. I'll be happy to come and do it. I'll load the truck up and I'll put a chain in there, and if I can jerk her out there, I'll do it. But I'm going to go out on a limb and say, most people here say, no, you ain't doing that. That's just crazy. I can't live in a house with the sports going out from under it. Mmm, doggone it. Sometimes we get caught on our own pitchfork, don't we? That's right. You can't live in a house with the supports going out from under it. And we can't build something special with no support. Amen. We can't build something special with no support. Now, we can look like every other church. We can cosmetically go through our church history and look like every other church around. And I'm not knocking them. I'm just saying that's just what churches have evolved to. But now, I am not satisfied with that. I am not satisfied with a church that evolves just to exist, just to make its members comfortable, just so that by chance, if you come by, you're going to fall right back into place and like you've never missed anything. Churches are somewhat like soap operas. You say, oh, brother, you going to preach on soap opera? Yes, I am, just for a minute. I can remember my mama watching soap operas when I was a kid. She'd be cleaning the house watching soap operas. And then I grew up and became an adult. Lived some life, had some kids. I walked over to my mama's house one time, and she was watching a soap opera. You know what was happening? The same thing that happened when I was a kid. <laughs> same people, same story. You could pick right up, didn't miss a thing. And unfortunately, churches have become that way. You can show up today, not show up for three months, come back in, and it look exactly the same as it did when you was there the last time. Well, that's not going to cut it. When people are not here, I hope they come back a couple weeks later and say, Wow, well, what did I miss? Man. There's more people. There's more spirit. There's, I feel like I've missed something. I want to be a part of it. That's what I'm talking about when I say we can build something special. But it's not just on me. It's on you as well. But you have to be committed to it. The Bible tells us that a foolish person starts to build something without counting the cost. A foolish person puts his effort into something without first sitting down and saying, hey, can I actually do this? Can this be accomplished? As I was praying this week about this message, I was asking myself, Randy, am I wasting my time? You could preach this message and people could sit there and look at you with the same wall-eyed stare they look at you with most every other Sunday. And when you leave... It'll be the same wall-eyed feeling that they leave with, and they'll come back the next time, and they'll have the same wall-eyed look on their face. And so you could probably skip the message and end up at the same place. I would say that's probably a feasible hypothesis, wouldn't you? But, 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 so I was praying about this, right? I said, Lord, I said, what if, what if? Lord, what if that we go with this message that you have provided? And Lord, what if, what if people take it to heart? I said, what if, what if people actually listen and they decide within themselves that what they've been experiencing is good, but they want better? That that we've hit a plateau, but we still haven't got to the top of the mountain. And what if they say, you know what? I'm willing to put aside everything else. I'm willing to make a commitment to you, not me, but God and the church. And I'm willing to be used however God wants to use me. 
And I'm willing to, to be fitly joined together with a bunch of other fitly joined together members to build something special. And then what we will see is something unlike that has been seen for a long time in a lot of different places. That we're going to let the Holy Spirit reign in our lives. And that we're going to come together with a single purpose and a single heart. And it's going to somewhat resemble the days of the disciples and the apostles whenever they were with one mind and one accord. And what did the Bible say happened when they did that? There was thousands saved. Now you say, Brother Randy, you're grasping for the stars. Well, that's okay because I know who hung them. And they're within my reach. And they're within your reach. Man, it'd be something, wouldn't it? It'd be something. You ever seen a carpenter show up on the job without a saw? You ever seen that? I've worked around some knotheaded carpenters before. And inevitably, they'll have some helper somewhere that forgot to load something that day. And if they forget to load the saw, they come out there and they got all these boards, right? And they say, well, we could put them together. But one, it ain't going to look that great. And two, it probably ain't going to work that good. It's going to create a lot of chaos. Here's the crazy thing about being fitly joined together. Now, Patrick is a good carpenter, okay? If you're if you, if you doubting me, because I'm not a carpenter, but if you doubt me, you ask Patrick about this. If you want to fitly join something together, you've got to cut it at the right angle. And you've got to put it just right together. And when you do, it's as strong or stronger than one piece, if it's done correctly. But now notice what I said. It's got to be cut. Okay? You just don't slap it together. Okay? You cut it and fitly join it together. The reason I told you that is not to give you a lesson in carpentry because I'm not a teacher of carpentry. The reason I told you that is to tell you that you may have to have your angles cut just a little bit. They may be a little trimming that has to be done in order for you to fitly join together with the rest of the body. God may have to move some things out of your life in order for you to grow and become a viable member of the structure. Now I'm going to ask you the 100% loaded question of the day. Are you willing to give up things for God? Are you willing to give them up? You said, Brother Randy, it depends. It depends on what it is. Well, I, you know, I, I love... I love my, the house I have. I love the job I have. I love the car that I drive. I love my hobbies. I, I, you know, I, I, I love having a little jingle in my pocket. I, you know, I love having a, a position of prestige or power. I, you know, I, I love having control. I love having all these other things. And, and Brother Randy, if you ask me to give that up, then you might as well just throw me out the back door. Well, I hope it don't come to that. But, but. I have purposed in my heart after 14 years and some odd months of pastoring this church, I have spoke the truth to you. I have loved on you. I have petted you. I have done about everything I possibly can do for you. Now I'm going to give you the hard truth is that if you are not willing to be a part of the structural members of this church that fitly are joined together and you're going to be an oddball that always causes problems, then it's probably best you leave. You hear me? If you're going to be an oddball that all you want to do is cause problems and troubles and trials and you don't want to fitly join together with everybody else, it would probably be best that you leave. Now, I know that probably sounds odd coming from a pastor who would love to see his church grow, but I have learned sometimes less is more. And if all you want to do is cause problems and troubles, then please don't do that. Because we need people joined together because we're trying to build something special. Amen. And I'm going to go a little bit a step further. If you could look around the room today and say, well, you know what? Well, I don't like him or I don't like her or I don't like this and I don't like that one, then may I invite you to the altar at the time of invitation or you don't even have to wait till then. Okay? Because I'm going to tell you something. Pettiness 
and jealousies and selfishness and all that has no place in God's house. We should look together and say, how can I help you? What can I do to become a strong member of something special? That when my time is past and the Lord calls me away, that I leave with a knowledge of knowing that when I leave this place, there's something that another generation will be able to come up and take part of that is something special for them as well. That it's not going to die with us. It's going to be something that lasts and lasts and lasts. You know what my dream is? You see all these little kids we got running around here? One day I hope their grandchildren are able to come to a church that is still winning souls of the lost if the Lord tarries his coming because of what we do today. Amen. Because we're obedient. Because we put ourselves aside. Because we say, I want to be something special. God, trim me where I need to be trimmed. I want to be fitly and compactly joined together. I am part of a body. I am not I am not, I am not the leg. I am not anything. God, I am whatever you want me to be, wherever you want me to be, however you want me to be it. God, use me. Use me. If there's a hole, plug me in. I'm ready. Put me in, coach. I'll play any position. You want me to carry water, that'll be fine too. If you want me to mow the grass, that'll be great. I'll do whatever you want me to do, Lord. Just put me in. Will you be part of that compactly fit together body today? Do you desire to be a part of it? Do you desire to be different than every other single church? Like I say, I'm not knocking them. They do what they do. Let's pray for them. God bless their hearts. I hope, I hope they have a spiritual awakening. But I'm not the pastor of every other church. I'm the pastor of this church. And I can't answer for every one of them, but this one I can. And for this one I have been bound to with responsibility. And that responsibility is to share with you the gospel message. And the gospel message is let's get together and let's build something special. Let's join hand in hand, and even if it causes us, and I know this is about to blow the lid plum off this plate, even if it causes us to do something different. <laughs> goodness gracious, I know I said it. Do something different, my goodness. I'll be called a heretic now, won't I? <laughs> but let's, let's seek the Lord. Let's start, and as I reference back to Nehemiah for a moment, when Nehemiah had heard that Jerusalem was in ruins and that the captives were struggling, do you know what the first thing Nehemiah done? He didn't run to the king. He didn't run down to Jerusalem. It said that Nehemiah prayed and fasted. For four months, Nehemiah prayed and fasted. He said, he sought what the Lord would have for him to do. Now, I'm a firm believer in seasons of life, okay? There are seasons in each one of our lives, and there's a season in a church life. Okay, here's what I want to ask, okay? Before we run off half-cocked, okay? Before, before we start slapping boards together without a plan, here's what we're going to do, Okay? And this is where I need a commitment from you all, okay? And I'm going to ask for it. I need a commitment that we're going to do some praying and fasting, okay? Now, you say, brother, we're Baptists. We don't fast. <laughs> I understand that, okay? Been, been studying a little bit on that. We'll get to that point later. But in, in so saying, I'm sure, and, and this ain't going to hurt you now, okay? It's, trust me, well, it might. But... Whittle something down, okay? I'm not saying go hungry. If you want to go hungry, that's fine. I'm not going to knock it. But, but let's turn the TV off. Let's put the phone down. Let's do some things that we normally don't do that we find our comforts in, and let's just say, hey, you know what? Rather than scrolling through Facebook for 10 minutes or watching the Andy Griffith show again for the 178th time, how about let's turn that off for a minute or let's put the phone down for a minute and let's pray about some things. 
Let's pray about some things. Now, I personally feel like 7 o'clock is a good time. And I know we've done this before. And I don't know, there was some of y'all that was here for the first revival that we had here. And we did this, and that revival was an outstanding revival. And trust me, we may end up there again, okay? So I'm not knocking, I'm not shutting that door. But right now, here's why I need your all's help. And I, wa I want you all to, and I know about everybody here has got one, set your phone reminder for 7 o'clock in the evening, okay? 7 o'clock in the evening. And at 7 o'clock every evening, I'm going to ask you to do this. Pray for just a few minutes. Lord, where do I fit in? Lord, how can I help? And Lord, is there anything that needs to be out of my life? It ain't going to take long, okay? I'm not, I'm not asking you to, to you know, pray all night. I'm not asking you to do something like that. I'm just asking you for just a few minutes of your time. You say, well, Brother Randy, I pray anyway. That's fine. I'm glad you do. But let's pray for something in, in, in the same direction. And say, Lord, put me where you need me. Lord, get me past myself. And Lord, use us. And in that, after that season, like Nehemiah did, then he said, okay, now I can go before the king and I can ask for his favor. And you know what happened? He went down before uh, our tax receipts and he said, he, said, he said, what's wrong with you? He said, you look sad. He goes, well, my heart's breaking for down here and I'm giving him the paraphrase version of this. And he said, well, what do you need? And here you go. You see, his prayer did some good. So I'm not going to ask you to jump up, and I'm not going to ask you to shout and run the aisles and hop pews and do all that stuff today, okay? That's not today. Today is when you look at yourself and say, you know what, I can commit myself to that. I can commit myself to praying with my sisters and brothers in this church to build something special. I can commit to prayer. And I'm not even going to ask you to give everything up today. Not unless you already feel the need. I'm going to ask that the Holy Spirit shows you what needs to be out of your life. And then I'm going to ask that the Holy Spirit carves those things out. And I'm going to ask this. I'm going to go a step further. I'm going to be kind about this. I'm going to ask that you don't even miss them whenever they're gone. Wow, I didn't even realize I was spending that much time doing that. Well, I could give that up, no problem. So will you commit to that with me today? If you'll commit with that, and, I, and, and, and hey, I'm not afraid to embarrass you this morning. If you're able to, as they come and get a song, now, don't you stand yet. Because here's what I'm going to ask. If you can commit to praying with me for a few minutes at 7 o'clock each day, would you please stand? All right. Now, I want you to look around. I want you to look around now, okay? All these people that will be praying in the same direction. Okay, you just hold on. Because I'm telling you something. When you get this many people praying in the same direction, oh, my goodness. It gives, it, honestly, it gives me them Holy Ghost bumps just thinking about it. Praying for God to show us the path. Amen. All right. There, if you will sing. Page 282. If, 282. if there's something on your heart this morning you would like to talk over with the Lord, I would be tickled to death to pray with you this morning as we sing.